Hello sweeties, welcome to episode 2. Today I am going to be talking about Marsha P. Johnson. Born 24th of August 1945, Johnson was a gay rights activist from the 1960s onwards, right up until her death in 1992. She chose the name herself, claiming the P stood for pay it no mind, which was generally her response when people asked her questions about her gender. After graduating high school, she moved to New York with $15 and a bag of clothes. At 17 years old, that was all she had in the world. She was known for wearing fresh flower crowns made from leftover flowers from the flower district in Manhattan. This seems lovely and romantic until you realize it was because she used to sleep under the sorting tables at night. She liked to dress in ways which displayed the meeting of masculine and feminine which was incredibly brave considering that New York at this time still had laws where you had to wear at least three items of clothing that was deemed gender appropriate. I touched on this in my previous video with Stormy Delivery. Um, so if a woman was dressed wearing a suit, she had to prove that she was wearing at least three items of women's clothing underneath, so bra, stockings, etc, or she would face imprisonment, and vice versa with a man. Um, in 1975, she was even photographed by Andy Warhol. She was considered an icon in so many ways. In 1969, she was living around Christopher Street and a frequent patron of the Stonewall Inn. She was actually one of the first drag queens to visit the inn um, when they started letting in non-gay men basically. To start with Stonewall Inn their only patrons were gay men um, and then in later years they opened up and were allowing lesbians and drag queens to visit as well. Several Stonewall veterans um, named her as one of the leaders um, of the uprising and even credited her with throwing the first brick at the police. However, she denied this. Um, she always claimed that she didn't arrive at the inn until an hour after the riots began. She'd actually been in another area of the city and heard about the riots, gone to find a friend and let them know what was happening before going back. Um, however, she was present over the next days of the uprising, of the uprising, sorry, put my teeth in, and many sources corroborate that she climbed a lamppost and dropped a bag containing a brick on a police car, smashing the windscreen, which is possibly where the confusion came from. Following Stonewall, she joined the Gay Liberation Front and marched in the first ever Pride Rally on the first year anniversary of, the Stone, of Stonewall. She also co-founded the Street, Transvest Street Transvestite Action Revolutionaries. It was originally Street Transvestite Actual Revolutionaries, but it was changed. Or the Star Home. It was an organisation to support gay and trans individuals who had been left homeless. And she founded this with Sylvia Rivera. They had a house where people who needed shelter could and help could go. They gave out clothing, food, advice, etc. And they paid the rent for the building with money that the two of them earned from sex work. Due to her charity work, her support, her image as the drag mother of the house, um, she was nicknamed the Saint of Christopher Street. In 1973, she and Sylvia were banned from the Gay Pride Parade. The committee who were administrating the event decided that they weren't going to allow drag queens because they were giving them a bad name. Bad name. The response from these ladies was to march ahead of the parade rather than with them. They were still there, they were still marching but they couldn't be said to have been marching with the parade. Shortly after the 1992 Pride March, Marsha's body was found dis floating in the Hudson River. Her death was initially ruled as a suicide, despite witness accounts of her being harassed by thugs days earlier, and 
close friends and acquaintances saying that there was no way she would have committed suicide. There was no, no, nothing like that. Her case was reopened in 2002 and her the cause of death was changed from suicide to undetermined. In 2012, activist Mariah Lopez succeeded in getting it reclassified to a possible homicide. So there you go. Marsha P. Johnson, an icon in so many ways and absolutely awe-inspiring. Personally, I admire anyone who can climb a lamppost because that shit's difficult. I've tried.